everybody and welcome. This is NBL Overtime. All thanks to LD Mobile. Hashtag NBL Overtime to get involved. So much going on. Superstars returning. Melbourne United still undefeated, but injury concerns. And this, the NBL Cup. I made this myself. We're going to get it stuck into that in a couple of weeks' time. Homicide? Well, you don't believe me? What's going on, man? What's going on? You look good. Yeah, I had to wear my sweater today. We got some stuff to talk about. I'm only bringing it out when things like this occur. Just to let people know, it might look funny, but I'm dead serious about it. Studs and Duds is out. Liam Santa Maria, hello to you. Hello. Uh, it's a nice looking cup, Cam. Yeah, it took me a couple of days. Uh, all right, I didn't make it. But the important <laughs> thing is that I've got it close to me. I'm not sure who's going to hand it over when the NBL Cup champion is actually decided. But I guarantee it will not be me. But what I will guarantee is that I will be at games. And you should be too, because we are only a little bit over a week away from it starting. This is how you get your tickets. They're on sale today. They're already going nuts. The big show, nine teams, double headers galore. There can only be one winner. And boys, this is unique. It is different. It's something that probably wasn't on the horizon 18 months ago before the pandemic. But it's going to be very, very fun. It's going to be it's going to be very fun. It's going to be an absolute feast of basketball and of course there's the cup that will be handed the homicide cup, right? The homicide cup. <laughs> homicide cup. But I tell you what, I mean if you live in Melbourne and we know a lot of people love basketball in mm. Melbourne, play basketball, the participation rates are through the roof. You got to take your family to these games. 17 bucks gets you in for a double header. And you can watch the best in the business. Yeah. And not just not just Melbourne United and South East Melbourne Phoenix. I mean, you can pick the players from around the league that you love to watch. Take in two games a night and the games just keep flowing. So get to the website, get your tickets and it uh, should be big. And the thing is too, all right, let's look at this, at this backdrop, all right? This is for example. So Lamar Patterson, that's a little bit of a different situation because New Zealand are in Australia. But if you're a Nathan Sobey guy, obviously being a Victorian, you can see him a lot more than you traditionally would. A lot of Casper Ware fans in Melbourne. Go watch the Kings. Of course, Scotty Hobson already here. Majuk Deng was brilliant last night. We'll get to him and, well, Bryce Cotton, you want to see in your idea, the GOAT and the best player in the competition. If you are a Melbourneian or a Victorian and you want to see Bryce Cotton doing his thing, you get to do it a hell of a lot more, get to see it a hell of a lot more than you traditionally would. And if you're a Melbourne United fan, he's not taking the championship trophy home with him when he's here, like he did a couple of years ago. But that is what the NBL Cup is all about. Jump online, get your tickets. You got yours? Look, I have my media pass, <laughs> so I'm getting in the building. But... Uh... <laughs> You guys said all the right things, all the things that are correct. But Thank you're you. missing out and forgetting about well, here we go. the cash prize. 300 k in prize money. So spoken, these players... Spoken like an import. No doubt. <laughs> 300 k in prize money at stake. These guys are going to be going extremely harder when you know money's even more money's on the line. So wow. high-level basketball, world-class basketball will be on display Get down there. All right, let's get to really the main story of the day as well because the Hawks, and it's been a topic of conversation for around 12 months now, they are no longer just the Hawks. They are now the Illawarra Hawks. It is back. The NBL, of course, in consultation with the ownership and the management, set out a little bit of a plan, gave them a number, and they achieved it. It is now the Illawarra Hawks. They are back. Liam Santa Maria. Great result. Well done to the Illawarra community, the, mm -hmm. the, the membership drive, the corporate support. I mean, there are some corporate partners who brought up a whole bunch of those memberships to make this the reality. And uh, there you have the photo of Larry and, and Dory together. Happy, happy days. And look, it's only right. That, that, that team is the Illawarra Hawks. But at the same time, you've got to get around them if you're that local community to support them and to, uh, you know, to really... Um, solidify the future of that organisation. You can't just have owners come in and just say, pour your money in. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a collaborative approach. So hopefully with this very fun squad, elite talent on the roster and the greatest coach in NBL history at the helm, that stadium will be packed out and that Illawarra chant will be bouncing off the rafters. Man, Liam, you hit it on the nail. You hit it on the nail. You talk about professionalism, Dory's brought that. With the other ownership the ownership group, the other owners. Um, they wanted to be serious contenders. They are that five and five, four and one in five games. Mm -hmm. He went and got the GOAT as a coach. He's been gone for 11 years. We know this. In six months, he's been able to. They got Pepper Money. Pepper Money is the biggest sponsorship group this uh, team has ever had in the history. All right? Now, you're talking about membership tickets, right? Mm -hmm. Sponsorship uh, tickets. Here's what they got. 
Pepper Money, 1,500 memberships. MCR, three, five, 500 memberships. Number one draft picks, 500 memberships. City Sports Group, 500 memberships. 3,000 memberships purchased for corporate, from mm. corporate for their grassroots and community. So what they've been able to do in such a short period of time has never been done before. And I salute them. I salute their whole team off and on the court, what they want to bring. And this is just not for this season. They want to make their mark in this league. And so far, so good. Congratulations. And you mentioned it as well, and both of you, community and corporate. You've got to find that right balance. Not only do you want the people of Illawarra and Wollongong and the areas getting to the games and selling this joint out to watch an exciting team, but corporate money needs to be there in any professional sporting sense. And that's exactly what, judging by the numbers you've just given and the fact that Illawarra are back as the name, they've been able to do. And, and But you can't just demand it. No, You've you got can't. to put a product out there no doubt. that earns it. Mm -hmm. And with the players that they have and the coach, and you've seen what they've done out there on the floor, they have that team. So we talk about getting to the games at the NBL Cup. Pack out that win entertainment centre. Right. They're back there this week for their home opener, Ooh. and uh, that place should be pumping. All right. Uh, look, the good news is that uh, hopefully all those numbers and everything was signed up prior to Sunday because they've been great. But South East Melbourne Phoenix put them to the sword. First game at the State Basketball Centre for the year. We've been sitting there waiting for Cam Glidden to get hot. His third quarter was outstanding. We know Kiefer Sykes has been brilliant. Ben Moore was outstanding. Mm -hmm. He continues to get better and better each week. I'll kickstart to you, Liam, because you are big on this team, you think. Pre-season, they're going to be very, very good. Talk us through what you did well. Yeah, I'll take this because you two guys are still a little bit asleep <laughs> on this team. And let, let's, let's be totally honest. And on some of these guys, you're a little mm -hmm. bit asleep on Ben Moore. Mm -hmm. but, and you're not alone, but the league is waking up. That's three double-doubles for him now, two in a row. Big impact guy off the bench. Wide spread of scorers. Five, five guys with 15 points. And that man, Cam Glidden, of course, lighting it up in the third quarter with five of seven three balls. And this is the, the zone that's been causing teams problems. Well, the South East Melbourne Phoenix tore it to shreds. They got paint touches inside, outside, off the dribble, off the pass. And uh, as a result, they got open shots and they got, they got scores at the rim as well. They, this is a team that's going to be right in the mix for a playoff spot at the pointy end of the season because they have a great spread of talent they've got some high level guys Kiefer Sykes is the right guy to lead that team from the point guard position and they have potential and we saw it on display this week they have potential to become a really good defensive unit and that's how you win games in in the NBL if you put all that together and uh, I like what they have served up so far and I'm excited about what that team can do you know what I was impressed with in addition to all you said defense-wise, what they were able to do to the NBL Splash Brothers. Mm -hmm. They limited them to 24 points on 9 of 20 from the field. That's just great defense because, I mean, come on, man. That backcourt for the Hawks are electrifying, and they've been lighting pretty much everybody up they went against. So to keep them, Tyler Harvey, 13 points. Justinian Jessup, 9 points. And they're a, such a huge focal point offensively. That's how this team gets going. And... The best thing about that, right? I mean, look, the reality is I don't care how good you are. You ain't going undefeated in this league. That's just what it is. Now, the bright stars of that game for the Hawks, Cam Bristow back 15 points and six rebounds and Dengadel 17. They got to figure out how to balance that unit out now because their two biggest names on the roster are now back. So they just got to figure that out. But they have a chance to get it back right because why? Melbourne United at home this Wednesday, and I'll be there. The, I will oh, be in the building. Oh, what? wow. Oh, I'm going up there. We did discuss this. <laughs> forget protocol. I'm making it. No, just forget. kidding. Hey, just kidding. Don't, just kidding. Don't forget protocol. <laughs> don't forget protocol. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, I'm going down there. Okay. It's going to be great. What I will say, too, and you and I were both at this game, the fact is, and I think Phoenix did this better than anyone has done so far, and the fact that they won the game is obvious, is tr transition defense. Harvey and Jessup, and the way the Hawks were running, Illawarra were running, and the fact they were able to get some good looks and get them into the groove. Phoenix didn't let them at all. And a lot of those times where Harvey and Jessup started to feel themselves, they were able in semi-transition to pull up and nail threes. Phoenix didn't allow that to happen at all and it changed the whole complexion of the game. And got to shout out Cam Glidden. Five Man. threes in that third quarter. We know we've been waiting, <sighs> waiting and waiting and waiting for him to get going. And if you're a Phoenix fan or you're a Phoenix player or coach, you've probably been waiting even longer. But the fact is that when he shot the ball like he did, 
in the third quarter on Sunday. It changed the whole game. It allowed Sykes to do his thing. It allows Ben Moore inside, Wetzel, and, and open it up. So hopefully this is the Cam Glynn. We know what he can do. Maybe not five threes every quarter, but we know that he can stroke it. And if he gets that going, away they go. Maybe it's semantics a little bit, but I don't think it changed that game. It blew it open, mm -hmm. yeah. But I think the Phoenix were in control of that game. That's also probably And then true. the five triples from, from mm -hmm. Glidden just blew the game open, and from there it was done and dusted. And I like the feel of that team. There's great harmony. Um, everyone's buying into the scout and what needs to be executed. Um, everyone, you know, Simon Mitchell, they're all letting him coach them you know we saw last night in the huddle for New Zealand right like the the the, the there's a disconnect right now between guys like Lamar Patterson and, and Dan Shamir well that that sort of thing doesn't exist with this Phoenix team and you've got an import like Ben Moore fully bought into his role off the bench I'm gonna be that best six man and I think they've got a lot of really good things going for them they're playing well. Melbourne United, just down the mm. road, they're 5-0, playing particularly well, but there are injuries now. Shaili, the ankle in Brisbane, he looks like he'll miss a month and most, if not all, the NBL Cup. And Chris Golding, likewise, with a calf. They were gritty with a big win, bigger chul. My tip for most improved player is, uh, one, not passing it, but two, having a nice year. But the fact is that this team now, they're deep. They're probably the deepest in the league. But to lose Chris Golding and Shea Ely, it's going to be tested. It starts tomorrow night. What have you made of Melbourne United? I'll go to you first, Liam. Well, they've been sensational, mm -hmm. haven't they? Just wasn't Chris Golding electric on Friday night? 24 points in the second half, 16 in the fourth quarter. And what a shame for him to go down mm -hmm. on, on the Sunday just because he's so fun to watch. And it's an Olympic year, hopefully, um, named in that Boomers squad. But... Um, look, they're, they're loaded with talent. Um, they've got great buy-in as well. And, you know, Jack White's been a revelation. Scotty Hobson's getting going. Jack, Jock Landale, sorry. I love the way he just reads the game. You see the double team there, skip pass over the top of the defence, finds his open teammates. He's gradually putting more and more numbers on the board, but he just reads the game and lets it come to him and then does things like that. Hey! as he throws the hammer down on John Mooney. So they're undefeated. But like you say, Corey, they're not going to stay undefeated. It's a hard season. It's a long season. It's a tough league. Injuries are going to happen. Teams are going to catch fire. They're going to have um, to answer some questions now about their depth with guys like Bubba and Sam McDaniel and the like stepping up. But uh, so far, they've ticked all the boxes. It's a shame that those two players, Illy and Goulden, are injured and out for a month because they have been rolling. They have set mm -hmm. the tone, along with others, but those two guys have set the tone in the beginning, since game one, and it's carried over. The interesting thing is this. I posted this weekend on Chris Golden. He knows and understands what the goal is. The goal is to win a championship, transition and carry it over to Japan and medal. And that's exactly how he began playing this year. What he did in Brisbane was just, that just goes to show you, because a couple of days before that, the list came out for the <laughs> Olympics, right? So it was kind of like even more incentive to level up and play at the elite level at a more consistent basis. We know Chris Golden is a gun, the premier two guard in this league, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. The premier two guard Australian in this league. There okay, it is. There it okay, is. my there bad. Is. Come on. <laughs> there right, it right, is. My bad, my bad. So he wants to make sure he stamps that spot going to Japan. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, I, I can guarantee you a conversation has gone like this. Yo, Jock, look here. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to set this tone. This is the super yacht. We're the captain of this ship. This ship is going. And we have to play consistent and elite. We have to hold each other accountable, come out every day. Everybody else will follow suit. But we have to set the tone, and that's what they've been doing. So I am, I'm more mad than Melbourne United fans, than he, than he is mad right now, than he got injured. And with Shea Ellie, Shea Ellie, Illy, is the master in harassing people. And he's hitting the three now. Mm -hmm. You know what? They don't need to worry. I know they don't. They got Baba son. Yeah. And they, now, you know yeah. what? You know what? Shout out to Baba. You day Baba, just off the bench, getting busy. He can play, and now he's going to have more minutes for him to show more of what he can do. Mm -hmm. And what this does as well is give a chance for Scotty Hobson to get more touches sure. and more minutes and get more comfortable out there. And he will be more productive because he'll have 
more of a show level responsibility to carry. Hashtag NBL overtime to get involved. You can hit us up anytime you like. There was a change in Adelaide. Now they get beat by the Kings, which we'll get to in a mm. moment. But the very fact is that Donald Sloan didn't play with a sore foot. And then the next day he was released. Liam Santa Maria won. Did he have a sore foot? And two, what is the latest when it comes to replacing uh, this guy who was okay in patches, but probably when we looked at him, we spoke about this, played a very similar role to Josh Giddy. And Josh Giddy's early season play probably made it a little bit harder to have them both playing big minutes. Uh, he didn't get it done. He didn't get it done, Cam. Scored over 10 points once in six games, uh, never more than four assists. And um, look, it was quite clear that Josh Giddy needed to be starting. And Look, he's a good guy. He was a great, you know, Josh Giddy was singing his praises as a mentor. You even saw him on that game the other night in, in Giddy's ear helping him out. But um, it wasn't a good fit in the end. Um, and so, look, what's happened behind the scenes? The foot, did he want out? Did they, look, the, the point is, did he, wasn't he, get, foot? he wasn't getting it done and he's gone. All right. And so now, they now? Need to, uh, now they need to find someone else and... You know, we can talk a bit about that, but well, I'm asking in the <laughs> oh, come on, where do we? Well, sit Corey there? might have some thoughts on Donald Sloan. Well, today I wanted to wear this sweater, and I think it's going to be a ritual when I bring out the sweater. And I joke around a lot, and I say it with a smile on my face. It ain't a cupcake league, and this is an example of that. Um, I'm sure, you know, in his day. Mm -hmm. He was legit, as we saw, when he played 200-plus games in the NBA. We know he got game, right? Mm. But coming here, he probably thought that it was going to be what I say, you know, in America, we say, you think it's sweet. He probably thought it was sweet. Mm -hmm. Sweet like a cupcake. Mm -hmm. It was going to be easy. It was going to be a walk in the park. And he had one good game out of what, four games? Six. Six, six games. And that's not going to get it done. So now a younger 18-year-old is playing better than him. That's the reality of it. And as a vet, it's like, I didn't come here to play behind an 18-year-old. So if you're not getting it done and now you are backing up a next star, you know, that's a knock to the ego. So he probably was just like, listen, I'm ready to get out of here. So for all of you guys who, again, may believe it's easy down here, just read my sweater. It ain't a cupcake league. Now, Adelaide fans, I'll ask again. Liam Santa Maria, what are you hearing about a possible replacement? Well, there's a lot of buzz about Jeremy Kendall, mm -hmm. right? The guy who often, his name is often uh, brought up in these types of situations. And uh, look, my understanding is that's, that's very much on the cards. Now, he is in Australia, right? Yeah, he's in Australia. He's yes. been training with Brisbane. Yes. You know, he had the knee and injury. The ACL. was yep. tearing up the mm -hmm. 3x3. Killing it! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Killing it! Mm -hmm. Agreed. <laughs> We're big fans of Jeremy Kendall. We are! I... And, I'm, a, and, I'm a part of this. And, and, don't get it, <laughs> and don't get it twisted. If, if, he, if he was naturalised, if he had his citizenship, he'd be mm -hmm. on rosters. Don't worry about that. Right. Um, so the fact that they can draw on him for a period of time while they look overseas, they need to get an impact guy. Josh Kidd is the starting one. That's how it is with this team the rest of the way. Sunday Detch, you can't put him on the bench. He's been so important for that So team. consistent at both ends. You know, he's right there as best defensive player in the league. Um, what you do is you bring in another guy on the wing who can get buckets. You bring Tony Crocker off the bench. True. And, but you need a guy, a, a guy who can come in, play the two and the three, and uh, and really you know get the you know, hit knockdown shots. They need some three point shooting on that team, and uh, that I imagine would be the plan for them moving are, forward. Are you hearing any names in that particular situation? Not yet. Okay, maybe. Look towards China. All right, let's get to Casper Weir, though, because he was really good. Do you know what? Saturday Maybe night. don't look towards China. Huh? We see a lot of guys coming in from that CBA, and Donald Sloan's one of them. Yeah. No, it's not always a great result. I'm not the recruiter, mate. I'm just passing on what might be getting said. Let's get to Casper Weir. He was brilliant. 27 points on Saturday night. I'm going to get to you first, Homicide, because this man, we know how good he is. We know what he can do in the league, and it was fun to watch him. Unless, of course, you're an Adelaide fan, it was fun to watch him do this. It really was fun to watch Casper. This is the cast. This is the Melbourne United Casper where we've all grown to appreciate and respect. 27 points, 6 for 10 up from the land of plenty. Um... It was just really good to see him in a groove, you know, hitting a shot. And that man right there, man, he has a bunch of tricks in his bag. Jarrell Martin, 23 points, four rebounds. He put on a clinic. His mid-range game is ridiculous. He could hit the three. He could put the ball in the deck and just create from... He's just giving you issues the, in any way you want it. So between him, Casper Weir, 
and DJ Vasilovic, mm. 15 points. You know, when he gets the ball, that's damn near a bucket every time he touched the ball. <laughs> he's nice. So he's, he's yeah. definitely nice. And um, Bruce, um, seven assists, just getting the guys in the right position to score and make plays happen. I mean, the trio combined for 65 points. And they did everything they needed to do defensively. They shut down. Isaac Humphreys, the double team, and everybody came to play. Um, Hunter, 11 rebounds. Brad Newley, nine, rebound, nine points. Craig Muller, nine points. Collectively, they did their job, and it was a really good win for the Sydney Kings. Studs and Duds is out. NBL.com.au to check it. App, wherever you can get it, get it, because you gave a big shout-out to Coach Adam Ford. I did. It was a big game for Coach Adam Ford. Every one of these highlights is the Sydney Kings getting things done at the offensive end, but it's what they did defensively that was the difference in this game. And, and as I wrote today, this was the night where Adam Ford made this team his own. They'd been in the drops coverage to open the season, the carryover from the Will Weaver schemes. They had limited time in the... He only became the coach late in the preseason, And they were the number one, one ranked defence last year. So it's hard to change that right away. Mm -hmm. But um, Nathan Sobey tore it apart. The Adelaide 36ers tore it apart. They had a week to get things going, and he made the adjustment. And as I wrote today, that's not Andrew Bogut in the middle for the Kings as that deep drop rim protector. That's Jarrell Martin, and he's a power forward playing right. centre. Right. He wants to come out to the line of the screen and get involved, and they made a huge adjustment. That's going to be them the rest of the way for me. Going to have to work things out when Daniel Kicker comes back involved because he's more comfortable in that scheme. But this was a big, big game for Adam Ford hats off for making that adjustment and now this team is his own. I want to give a shout out. Please. A play on Adelaide. Madronia. Mm. 11 points coming off the bench. What I really liked about that is that you know, a lot of times, man, you're not going to get a lot of minutes, if any. And you want to make the best of your opportunity when you get it. Get that young man some playing time. Man. He deserved it. He earned it. And I got respect for anybody who gets no playing time, comes in, mm. and proves that he belongs on the court. Actually, so big respect. We're seeing a little bit of this in NBL 21, actually, of, of kids or players who don't play a great deal coming on and having the aggression and the confidence to take the game on. We've seen Blagojevic last night do it for Cairns. Yep. He plays a little bit more. But the fact is, when he was called upon, came in, gave them energy in the first quarter. So I'm only named two. Well, you named one. And I Isaac named White last week Isaac off the bench. Does it again. So there's a lot <laughs> of confidence from these young men Getting their chances. It's, it's, it's one of the silver linings mm -hmm. of being a two-import league rather than right. a three-import. Guys are getting those opportunities. And it's not just guys deep on the bench, but it's it's locals um, that are higher up in the rotation as well. Like a guy like Dion Vasiljevic, yeah. as a result of two imports, <laughs> is getting Love all it. kinds of opportunities. Well, he right now, he's, he's top three in the league for locals mm -hmm. who can create their own shot. Yeah. It's him Chris Golding and Ty Webster. And that's great company to be in. Yeah. Well, I said this when the announcement was made. I think this is where the NBL should go long term. Stay at two imports. All right, let's get to Santa's watching. Have you been watching? Uh, I've been watching. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry about me. That's a good start to the segment. Take it away, Liam. Well, we're going to start uh, when uh, when the lights went. This was oh. the best value for money yeah. moment for Hungry Jacks. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Flame, Flame grill, grill, baby. <laughs> Flame grill in Brisbane. And uh, Ty Webster was trying to... Oh, hold on. What happened? Uh, hold on. Oh, jeez, was anybody... He's like, was anybody watching? Oh. <laughs> he's like, oh, the camera was, was right there. Uh, keep an eye on Mirko Jarek off the bank free throw. Look at Mirko. Loving it. <laughs> uh, and speak... You know, Fabian Krizlovic probably needs to holster the oh. free ball. Because he's a regular on Santa's watch. Oh, no. Long range. <laughs> right now, keep an eye on Judd Flavel in the back. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> oh, uh, wasn't quite ready for that one. And speaking of Mirko Jerry, Machado's trying to get a little love. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Just nothing. And, uh, hey, one extra little bonus clip. Here we go. This is Mike Kelly and Scott Machado in the presser. Um, but the great thing is that they, they want their teammates to, to have the, balls, the ball in the right position. And, uh, and those guys... Made made shots tonight, so that was that was nice to see, and uh, you know, good um, good contributions from everybody who played tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Loving it. That's what winning can do. Mm. And winning can do. Everyone's in a bit of a better mood, and you feel you can have a little laugh. All right, let's get to all thanks to LD Mobile, the top ten plays of the week.
Round four is in the books. Let's make this one cook. It's Rowdy Mobile MDL Top 10. At number 10, Space Cam makes a nice little spin, but the big man never saw Finn. Delaney showing off the hops to stop that shot, and the breakers get us started at number 10. On to number nine, and with time winding down in the third, David Barlow gets absurd with defenders draped all over him. He drops the shot to beat the clock, and Melbourne gets in with the buzzer beater and crowd pleaser at number nine. At number eight, we're gonna have to give Jason Katie the assist for the miss, cause that cleared the lane for Tyrell Harrison to bring the pain. The rebound throwdown for the young seven footer gets in at number eight. We're up to number seven and oh boy, it's Chris Golden cutting back door and getting up off the floor. CG43 breaking free from gravity as Chris Golden takes it to orbit to score it for Melbourne at number seven. At number six, look who's back and attacking the rack. It's Tyrell ringing the bell once again all over the rim. Nathan laid in a perfect pass as Sobe sets up Harrison for the oops smash as Brisbane gets in again at number six. On to number five, and Finn Delaney's on the drive, but Space Cam's rising high to deny. Oliver swatting that shot to the three-point line. That wasn't even Cam's man, but he's still getting up for cans at number five. At number four, will Space Cam ever land? Back to back with Oliver as Scott Machado tosses it up, and Big Cam hammers home the stuff. Off the out of bounds, Space Cam's throwing down and he gives you a smile. He's in at number four. Moving along to number three and it's Bye Bye You Die. Bryce Cotton puts him on skates and when Bye Bye recovers, it's way too late. You Die played great defense in this one, but the MVP always able to shake free Bryce Cotton in at number three. At number two, first Simon gets the steal, and then all of a sudden, things get real. Justin busting loose and bringing the truth from the roof. Man, the Hawks have some jocks as Simon goes flying as he gets in at number two. But at number one, it's Nathan Sobe one Kenobi making that heroic save, and then just watch the Jedi fly. Looking a bit like Michael Jordan with the up and under scoring. Nathan's been flying higher than an X-Wing fighter this season, and you see the reason as Sobe One Kenobi lands at number one on the MBL. Cut it! Ooh, thanks to LD Mobile, number one for Nathan Sobe having an outstanding season. But he doesn't win our JD Sneaker of the Week. That goes to Casper Ware, boys. Have a look at this. Ooh. The KD-13s, the Aunt Pearl, you are. Listen. The fashionista homicide, take it. Those are absolute heat on his feet. Mm -hmm. JD Sneaker of the Week, Aunt Pearls, KD-13s. I rock with those. They were working on Saturday, too, when he had a huge game. And that was uh, our Sneaker of the Week, all thanks to JD Sports. The undisputed king of trainers. I know you and, you and I mm -hmm. homicide there all the time. And this week, they're dropping the latest installment of these, the men's and women's Nike Dunk Callaways. They're in-store and online. For more info, and you've got to be quick, and how to grab your pair, go to jd-sports.com.au. Mm. They're nice. Listen, they're we need some love over here, JD. We, the, the, the overtime team, we got you covered now. <laughs> I agree. Holler at us. I agree. The most since you've ever spoken. All right, quickly. <laughs> Cairns and New Zealand. They went back to back. New Zealand got the job done Saturday night. Lamar Patterson, 13 points in the fourth quarter. Last night it was all about Cairns. A word on New Zealand homicide. No, a word on Cairns. I'll leave New Zealand to oh. Liam. I got three words for New Zealand. Uh -oh, okay. Listen, 19 points per game, four, five rebounds, 11 and a half assists yes. in that series. Scott Machado. That's the guy. All right. What That's do you all got? I got. <laughs> what do you got? I got three words for New Zealand. You got three. Move the ball. They look much better when the ball moves. And we've seen Patterson, Fine, and Webster. Webster, mm -hmm. Fine, and Patterson. Move the ball. Everybody gets involved. Have some fun. There you go. It's simple. <laughs> Hashtag NBL overtime to get involved. I've got a new one. Guys, look at this. Not the shot, the dunk. Oh get your NBL God. Cup tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah. that.